Our next presenter give a talk of their life. Uh, Tom Krause is the Assistant Director of Professional Growth System in the Pulaski Community School District. To show that this program works, Tom got an administrative job before actually completing um, his licensure. I mean, the, this is, is doing big things. Uh, Tom is going to give a talk tonight on the shift. Be a human energy producer, not an energy sucker. So why don't we give Tom a big, warm round of applause. Woo! All right, thanks. I appreciate it. Thank you for the warm, uh, warm uh, applause here. Um, life's a journey, and with life being a journey, we need to take time to listen. And if you, if you know that, the world will be opened up to possibilities. Now, with that being said, first off, who am I? Um, I'm a father, I'm a friend, I'm a coach, um, a sports fan, educational designer, a lot of things rolled into one. What's the commonality there? I didn't do any of this myself. I've been there with people to share the journey. I've been there with people to create things. If I'm so arrogant to say that I created a single thing that's back there on my table or whatever by myself, <laughs> I'm fooling you. Great things come from great people that can produce energy together and then move systems. Today what we're going to talk about is being that energy producer and not being the energy sucker. With that being said, got a plan, got an idea, and hopefully it spreads. There is a formula to be a human energy producer, and there's an action plan on how to carry that out. It's very simple. We got two things build community create authentic learning and authentic learning environments creates energy, shifting knowledge into action. That's all great. And we'll talk about innovation and say, hey, that's innovative. Great. All right, now how do you implement it? A plan's a plan, but you need to put it into action to actually see what happens. With the action plan here, this is what sits on my mantle at home, and my wife's like, hey, that's where they went. <laughs> we stole them. <laughs> yeah, great. She thought, she thought we got robbed of what I was about. <laughs> Believe, live, inspire. With that, each of these we'll drill down on today and talk about what does that mean. We've got to believe it's the age of empowerment. It's not the age of standardized tests. It's not the age of what do you know, what do you know, what do you know, what do you know, what do you know. It's the age of what do you all know and what can you create? you got to live. You have to have a vision and a mission as an energy producer, not as something that sits in a binder somewhere and says, we got a mission and vision and we live by it every day. What is it? What's your school district's mission and vision? If you don't know, then you, ask, you have questions. Why isn't everybody on the same page? It starts right there. But the mission and vision just isn't good enough. The mission and the vision has to produce energy. And it's not good enough just to have the mission and the vision, the mission, the mission and the vision. <laughs> you gotta do work. Do work. It's not easy. You have to produce energy by doing work. But you have to have other things here to allow that to happen. And this is where people fall short, and we fell short for hundreds of years. And we're in an age today of technology where we can put this out there. We need to inspire by reflecting, celebrating, documenting, and pushing it out. It's not good enough to say, I did this for my admin program, I got a certificate, and now I can just lead you. How many people know what their administrator did for their projects while they were in getting their license? We need to share it. We can't be ashamed of it. And if you have stuff that's in your project that goes against something within your district, whatever it might be, it better not be the first time that it comes out in a project. <laughs> Hopefully those things were beforehand. And if it wasn't, you need to start those conversations to be those leaders that are energy producers. The first phase here is the, the belief. With the belief, it's the age of empowerment. There's two systems. One is the traditional system of top-down. 
We have a superintendent, we have directors, we have other people, we have other people. You know, teachers are somewhere over here, all right? And if we want to keep on going further, here are your aides and everybody else that does and makes the, the, the school go around, the secretaries. And what happens here is everybody just keeps on going up. That system needs to die. But it can't die overnight. You can't just blow this up because it's anarchy. So we need to gradually shift this into this over here, which is rhizomatic redesign. What happens in rhizomatic redesign is you create energy by empowering people. We are in the age of empowerment. If somebody is good at curriculum development, you put them in charge of it. They are one of these yellow, you can see that, little spots. And they affect the people that are all around them. You have somebody that's good at community building. You put them in one of those yellow spots. You have them do their thing. We all have a yellow spot. And we need to capitalize on that. With this, this person right here is great at community building. This person believes in them. This person tells them, hey, go ahead. Tell your people to do what they want to do. This person says, no way. It's done. Anybody that goes up on this chain and says no, the idea is squashed. So you need to turn it upside down, and you need that person that has that mission and the vision to keep this type of system to allow energy to be produced. Set up learning communities. But they also need to have strands that run along with them. They need to build community. Best practice, technology, strength-based, autonomy within projects. What does that sound like? Grant program many of you are going through or went through. You can do this in a district. Why not? That's what I challenge you to do. If you know it's right, then do it. You have to empower people. And if you're here, build an army. Start to bring people in. You know what? If somebody up here is not really good for the organization, hey, they might not be there forever. Don't let your fire die. Because that's what happens. And then 20 years later, 30 years later, we have these people that are in this profession that came in and they had fires in their belly. And it's out. Reignite them and empower them. Bring them in on the conversation. You need to involve everybody to produce change. This allows for it because there's meaning and purpose behind it. Empowered people produce. How many of these people are being energy producers within the organization? Some people may a little bit here and there. How many of these yellow people who are the same people that are here are energy producers and get better at other things? Because, you know what, this person over here, they're a blue dot for this. But you know what? They're yellowed at somewhere else. So we learn from each other. Lifelong learning gets built into the system. With that, servant leadership has to be at the forefront of this. With that, um, as Greenleaf talks about, you cannot just be a servant leader when it's okay for you to be a servant leader. You need to be a servant leader when the people need you to be a servant leader. And that is truly giving yourself up. And if you believe in this system, that is what needs to happen. Does that mean you put your family at the back burner? No, not at all. But it's a system you buy into, and you need that personal and professional balance with it. But it can become so much easier and better because you do have that balance. Next slide, please. So you have the belief. You empower people. Second one, you need to live. You need to live the mission and the vision. There's three key thoughts here. One is the golden circle concept. And this comes from Simon Sinek. Many organizations do this to sell products. It's called a law of innovation. You need 15 to 18% of people to buy into what you're doing or your product to make it the norm. You don't need to bring in over half. You need to get the ball rolling. If you can do that, it's not as overwhelming. But that 15 to 18 percent, hey, that's still work. And people do not buy the what? They don't buy the product. They don't buy an iPhone. They buy the why. 
Why does Apple do what they do? Because they're the most innovative and different product. You must always lead with the why. And when you don't stay true to your why, people get irate. iPhone 4S. People hated it. Why? Because it wasn't different enough. They're not staying true to their mission and vision that puts fire in their belly. They didn't stay true to the why. They just thought, oh, we have iPhones. They'll just buy iPhones. No. It's the same in education. We have all of these different structures that can be bought and implemented. That's the what. Why do you buy it? Oh, because the federal government said we had to. No, you're leading with the what. You've got to lead with the why. What is your why? And you need the mission and vision that creates energy to do that. You also need a safe place. With that safe place, there's four things that relational leaders and empowering cultures constantly espouse and embody and reward. And you need to create a system that does that. One is openness, psychological security. I can do things, and if I fail, it's okay. Because psychologically, I know that I'm not going to get fired. I'm not going to get reprimanded. There needs to be an openness of ideas that goes back to the uh, rhizomatic redesign. Innovation. Employees risk trying, promising new ideas, keep what works, and let go of what doesn't. Mistakes are opportunities to further learning, not conditions of failure or sources of blame. If you truly embrace that, that is what innovation is. Innovation fails. Everybody uses innovation as, this is the program that we're going to put in to innovate us. Innovation is scary. And if you're not being scared by innovation, then you've got to check on, is it truly innovation? There needs to be open learning, collaboration, and also strength-based. Tom Rath, Strength Finder 2.0. If you try to become an expert in everything, you're going to be an expert in nothing. Truly put people where their strengths are at. You might say, well, then they're not well-rounded. And how are they going to do this? How are they going to do that? There's other people with those strengths that can help. And that's where the open learning model comes in. The final thing is Daniel Pink's drive. What motivates people? You need to understand motivation of people. Autonomy, mastery, and purpose. People need to have the autonomy to create ideas, push ideas up. They need to have the mastery that they can continually get better at what it is, and they need a purpose that they can tie it to. If they have those three things, they will do anything. It's not, there is no money involved in those three. Teachers, autonomy. Uh, some people have some people that just support, that, that support you and allow you to do your thing. Mastery, try to get better until you get to 15, 20 years in and all of a sudden you got shot down so many times, I'm done trying to be a master. I'm here for the paycheck, I'm going to put it into my family because I'm not appreciative or appreciated. And purpose, I think the purpose is there all along because it's the kids and it's the students that sit in front of us. But it's not enough to say shut my door anymore. What you need to do is say, open my door, open my walls, and collectively come together. And again, you need to do work. Everything we talked about is great on paper, but you need to do the work because you need to fail. You need to fail. You get a report card, your son or daughter, four A's, one B. What's the question? <laughs> Why the B? You need to be better. It's math, Mom. I don't like math. It's reading. It's, you know, nobody picks on math. I love math. <laughs> <laughs> but with that, why not say, boy, you're great at English. You want to write a book? No, 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 no. Get better at the math because without it, you're not going to go anywhere. Okay. Let's just keep everybody status quo. That's great. Next. Final thing here. You need to inspire. For the people that are watching on TED, do not do this without permission. I just did this without permission. <laughs> <laughs> with inspiring, you need to reflect. And with reflection comes what works, what doesn't work. But before you can push things out, you need to understand yourself before others can understand you. 
If you understand yourself, you can push things out, and it's scary. People have lost sleep in this room over that exact sentence. <laughs> or years of sleep. <laughs> However, it needs to be done. As a leader, you need to have conscious empowerment also. And what that means, what does conscious mean? I'm a lake, I'm, a, I'm alive, I have a pulse. All right, no. Conscious empowerment means that I know myself, but I know Michael. I can consciously empower him because I know his strengths and I know the other people around him and what they are. And that creates energy. Build community, authentic learning, energy producer. Cut any of those off, energy sucker. Because you can't <laughs> share those ideas. You need to celebrate and document learning. Leadership development is ultimately personal development. It's not just what's good for the kids here or there. If you're truly learning, pushing forward, it's also looking at yourself and what are those strengths and what are those weaknesses. Brief recap. Building community authentic learning is an energy producer, shifting knowledge into action. Three ways that you, that, that you need to do this. Belief, age of empowerment. You need to set up those things where you can empower people with that Rhizomatic redesign. It's messy. It's scary. You cannot quantify it. You can try. That slows down the process. You need to live. Live! Vision and mission as energy producers. Do the work. Roll up the sleeves. Get it done. Get dirty. I don't care I'm an administrator. I don't care your teachers. We're people. We all want the same thing. We're all motivated by autonomy, mastery, and purpose. If I went through this program to get paid more, and it's only about the money, I could have did a lot easier program. Because I could have just spit out some papers and been done. But this is hard. Mentally invested. I'd like to thank my wife for allowing me to do this. <laughs> Forget about this. How many people have given this same type of speech in their grad program? Same ideas. Had conversations with their professors. It's in their grad paper, so on and so forth. Where are they? Some people might know because they're a great person. Well, they're a great person no matter what. <laughs> it's not because of the program, this or that. We can actually have a systematic design that creates energy. That's the difference. You need to reflect. You need to celebrate. You need to push it out. It's scary. Absolutely. Final thing is we have the gatekeepers versus creative commons. When? Talk about inspiration and pushing out. There's two ways to look at it. Closed domain, open domain. Really, the closed domain was almost the only thing that you could do up until three to five years ago. There's this new thing called an open domain. And what that does, Twitter, Facebook, right? Pushing things out there as a creative commons. There's organizations that are created to say, put your ideas here, and you know what? Other people will pick them up and make them better and make them for themselves. That's exactly what we need to do as a teaching profession. I have something back there that anybody can use. Use it. If you don't, that's okay. If they use it in Australia, great. <laughs> will I ever know? Probably not. That's okay. Because it's making an energy producer by spreading ideas. The Creative Commons, it's open, it doesn't cost money, it's continuous. People can continually build on these ideas. You put your name on it, not for pay, not for money, not for all those reasons. You put your name on it because people may have to contact you and say, what do you mean by this? How can I do this within my organization? Here's my problem, this is what you did, I want to marry those together. Let's get going, let's work! 
That's what we need to do. The final thing here is we need to energize the world. Follow me and Krauss, you and see a little plug. Anyway, <laughs> it's not good enough for me to just say that. So what happens is on Twitter, here I am. I have 589 time to share with the world. 150 followers, 144 followers. Some people like to play this as a game and try to get people. I say that that's not true community because you really don't know them. You make the judgment. Over 20 professional practices to change the teaching profession. Let's get better. Here is my portfolio. Passion, service, Silver Lake Learning Community, 2011-2012. What you will find on there is this portfolio, which has all of my projects, prior competency work, which has all of this stuff here, and it's free to you because you're here. That's great, but it's not good enough. When I tweet this out, it has been sent. That's scary. <laughs> Everything on that back table is free to the world. Anybody that follows me, I have about 150 followers, whatever that is. Steve Collis, here it is. All right, nice smiling guy, cute. <laughs> With this, Steve Collis picks it up in Australia. He's an innovation consultant, innovation professor, innovation learning community, whatever. He likes it, he digs around, he pulls it out, it started over there. 